The concept of district heating offers a unique flexibility with regard to the choice of fuel. As a centralised alternative to individual heat generation, district heating is a cleaner and more efficient way of utilising fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas. As a viable alternative to fossil fuels, district heating can be based on a wide variety of CO2 neutral renewable energy sources, including straw, wood chips, wood pellets, biogas, geothermal heat and solar energy. Many Danish facilities can operate on more than one fuel type and most can be easily converted to suit changing fuel economics. This allows the use of locally available fuels, which may not be available all year, as well as combining fuel types to achieve the optimal economy and the lowest environmental impact. The major economic savings and environmental gains are achieved when district heating is largely based on the utilisation of waste heat, typically hot water from the cooling processes of industrial facilities that otherwise would be wasted. Another valuable source of energy is that of waste incineration. The cooling water from the incineration process is sent to the local district heating network. The cooling processes of many industrial facilities, such as cement factories and petrochemical refineries, produce waste heat in quantities that make integration with a district heating system viable. Today, all major power generation and waste incineration facilities in Denmark supply hot water to the local district heating network. 80% of all Danish district heating comes from surplus energy. The synergy between district heating and industry has several advantages. The energy used by industry will be consumed anyway, so the recovery and use of surplus heat represents a major reduction in the consumption of fuel by the district heating utilities. This approach has reduced dependence on imported fossil fuels to the extent that Denmark has been self-sufficient energy-wise since 1997. Likewise, the use of surplus energy represents a dramatic reduction in the total CO2 and particle emissions and the treatment of waste fuel byproducts such as particulate and bottom ash. In Denmark, power generation, waste incineration and district heating are fully integrated, making it feasible to formulate and implement a national energy policy in ways that would never be possible with individual solutions. A traditional electricity generation plant is relatively inefficient, even for a modern facility. Typically only 40% of the energy consumed is converted to electricity, whilst 60% is wasted in the form of heat loss. A combined heat and power solution, CHP, gives increased energy efficiency. For the same total energy consumption and electricity output, 50% of the energy consumed is converted to district heating, reducing the energy lost as waste heat to 10%. The economic and environmental advantages of district heating in Denmark are well documented. During the decade from 1996 to 2006, district heating resulted in a reduction of energy consumed per square meter and a similar reduction in the consumption of fossil fuels. Likewise, CO2 emissions were also dramatically reduced. Seen in relation to the economic growth in the same period, this represents a considerable increase in energy efficiency. The advantages of district heating are now all too obvious, yet they have been recognised in Denmark for decades. The first district heating utilities were based partly on surplus heat from waste incineration, and throughout the last century, especially during the fuel shortages of the Second World War and the oil crisis of the 70s, district heating came to rely heavily on surplus energy sources. The Danish energy sector is mostly under public control and there's a long tradition for democratic involvement in local utility companies. Yet the concept of district heating is equally suitable for operation by privately owned utilities because the economics make sense, and not just in the big cities.
There was a time when farmers would simply burn surplus straw following the harvest. In 1989, the burning of straw and stubble was banned for environmental reasons. Following the long-established tradition in Denmark for local utility cooperatives, many rural communities saw this as an opportunity to develop a district heating network. The benefits were twofold. The community gained access to a cheaper and cleaner energy source, and the farmers found a new and profitable local market for their surplus straw. Many small-scale district heating utilities based on renewable fuels can produce more energy than the local community can consume via district heating. Therefore, such utilities are designed to produce both heat and electricity. Today, these combined heat and power utilities are an important part of the Danish rural energy policy. District heating utilities based on fossil fuels are also pursuing new energy sources. In 2007, this natural gas-powered combined heat and power utility in Brastrup established a solar energy park to reduce the consumption of natural gas. Adjacent to the facility, 8,000 square meters of solar panels produce approximately 4 million kilowatt hours of energy per year, the equivalent of the annual heat consumption of 300 homes, around 10% of the facility's output. A 2,000 cubic meter holding tank allows the facility to store water heated during the day for use at night. This is the world's largest combined heat and power facility that includes solar energy production. Many Danish district heating utilities were established since the 70s based on fossil fuels. In recent years, urban growth and the development of new surplus energy sources has encouraged utilities in the major conurbation areas to establish wider networks that connect many previously separate local networks. One example is to be found in the four municipalities of Weile, Fredericia, Middelfart and Kolling, where a publicly owned company operates a network between the district heating systems in a region with 55,000 consumers. This network relies mainly on surplus heat from a power station, a waste incineration plant and from local industry. The Shell Oil Refinery in Fredericia is a major supplier of surplus heat to this regional network. From the network's control room in Fredericia, hot water can be directed between towns according to where the cheapest energy is available and where the energy is required by consumers. As a result, many of the older district heating facilities in the region are able to operate without using their older and more expensive fossil fuel-based generators, except during winter peak demand periods. The entire network is controlled 24 hours a day from Fredericia, reducing the operation and maintenance costs of the individual local facilities. Surplus heat distributed to the network reduces the annual CO2 emission of the region by 225,000 tonnes, the equivalent of burning 130 million litres of fuel oil. 